the From leash the moment necklace, you my hear his voice, you has know been they're audiences be with a unique Joey style Coco Diaz has been working comedy stages for 15 right? years. With her tongue You've seen in cheek, him in films and television, she's been exploring such topics of the dynamics of the male female relationships, or as we call them here in the studio, dirty thoughts, and the proliferation a different of the sensual feminist. She's a little firecracker rolled up, and that's why I love her, and that's why you're going to love listen. So tune in, all right? Rumor has it, Joey, that at the fight, you took acid? Two hits, myself and Ari Shafia for the Anderson Silva fight. Oh my God. Went to the fight and ate an edible banana nut bread from o- NOCC. Just in case the two hits didn't Just in case. We, work, I yeah. ate the edible first and ate the two hits of acid right behind it about 4 o'clock. The fight started at 4.20. By the time six and, yeah, the fight started at four twenty. Is that the perfect? That's the perfect time. That's not even lying to you. The, the, really? the preliminary started at Did four thirty. Did they plan it that way? Uh, that's what time you know they had a big yeah. card. I didn't so know was, UFC was four twenty time. So, so it's four twenty, and then the preliminary card starts at six. That's on Spike, and then there's two fights, and then at seven the regular card comes on. Right. They do the spikes on that. You get enthused. You get into it. And all of a sudden you're like, fuck it, order it. Yeah. Where's mom's credit card? Exactly. So that's how you do that, and then uh, but it was a very very, very enjoyable uh, little fucking holiday there. It really was. Yeah. Because uh, it, it just worked out perfect. The show was great. The Mandalay Bay, which a lot of people asked about you. A lot of people that listened to the podcast were there. Guy came up to me, said that he went through chemotherapy, oh, listened yeah. to the podcast. A lot oh, of interesting. Wow. A lot of people come up to you and say things like, hey, I listen to this stuff. But then people look at you and tell you a certain situation. Like some guy came up to me and said, hey, are my fries ready? You know, a lot of people really do pay attention to this and, you know, relate to some of the stories. So it was really nice. It, you know, it was a great show, but to compliment the show was the compliments people would t- give me on the side. And I must have got 30 of them, just about being oh, the nice, beast. Nice. And it hit home with me, you know. Oh, very nice. So uh, that was great. And the fight with the acid was fucking spectacular. Right. I, I can't even... Uh, I mean, just to sit there, if you know anything about the fights, Anderson Silva won with a front kick. I thought you were going to say, if you know anything about acid. <laughs> if you know anything about the fight, Anderson Silva won with a front kick to the fucking face. Caught oh, the guy yeah. in the first round. In the first round? In the first fucking round. Caught him with a side kick right to the jaw. With a front kick, I'm sorry. Right to the jaw, and the guy went down like a bad habit. And I just got up because I didn't want to hear no ritter ratter. You just know. the pro- You know, it's so weird that we live in America and... It's just a natural instinct to kind of hate. I sat there through the through the uh, through the weigh in, and I sat there through the fight, and they booed Anderson Silva. He's the champion, but this time he won decisively, like just a kick to the fucking face, boom! And the guy went down. He punched him once, and there was no getting up from that. And it was weird. Like I've known Anderson, I know his management, and they were so nice. And he's such a humble guy in a way. But before this fight, a lot of fans turned on him. Because they said that he wasn't attacking, you know. But he's the champion. People got to come out and attack fucking him. You know, he shouldn't have to fucking fight somebody. They should attack him. And then he counters, you know. So he would fuck around with people and they would get mad at him. But I think after this fight, it legitimized him a little bit more. And I wish you would have gone and someday we're all going to be able to go. I know. I can't wait to go to my first UFC event. And I really want it to be a, a special uh, event in some sense. Maybe you know we'll I mean? do like 4th of July. Because July 2nd is in Vegas and May 28th is in Vegas. Oh, yeah? Absolutely. So oh, that pretty would be good so time. much fun. That yeah, that was a great exciting. time, you know. And, and it really was a great time. We went up to this after party afterward. With the Phenom Sensation, John Bones Jones, representing 607 like a motherfucker up there in New York somewhere. And uh, it was just really nice. Everything turned out just perfect. You know? and, I, and, you had a gr- and you had a good set. I, I had a great set at the club. The yeah. club was a lot of fun. Yeah, good. So everything oh, good. worked out perfectly. You know, I got no complaints. Yeah, you shouldn't after a weekend like that. It sounds fantastic. And uh, it <clears> took <throat> me a while to get off the battery acid. And then yesterday afternoon. So let me ask you this: What, 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 what? How did the acid enhance the fight? In what sense? Well, uh, the lights. Yeah. <laughs> they always have these lights, and they have music before everything. And right. when they have booms, you hear it in your fucking heart. Like whenever they would have booms, like in the thing, and, and we had good tickets, but not close enough to hear the punches. That's what I was scared of. That every time you heard a punch. You would fucking die from you know if you heard the if you're on the acid or or there was a bloody fight I would trip but there was really no bloody fights or nothing so it all turned out wow. just fine. See, I uh, I just would have no desire to do acid at all. I I told you about my bad acid trip. Yes, yeah, you did. I just can't. Uh, when I was a kid, you know, I just think it's 
the most hideous drug. As I'm t- talking to Joey, he's checking his messages. No, I'm not checking my messages. That's fucking rude. I'm not checking my messages. It's my agent calling with some fucking oh, okay. story. All right, all right, all right. Some fucking story. You know, these people want to call you with some shit, and then it doesn't really matter. So there you go. Who gives a fuck? Let me right. scratch my nut real quick. My underwear's are pushing against it. All right, it. so we've. Uh, Seen what the agent had to say, and you scratched your neck. Should we start the show? <laughs> Let's start the fucking show. <laughs> Greetings to all you podcasters out there in Podcastville. This is uh, Felicia Michaels with my man, Joey Diaz. That's right. We're back. It's a beautiful Monday. It's 80 degrees here in sunny California. That's how we roll. Yeah, it's about time it acted like California. That's yeah. right. I had yeah. a great weekend. I know you had a great weekend out at the LLO Comedy Club in the San Antonio. Out loud in San Antonio. It was so cold, and there was I, it snowed. It snowed in San Antonio, and I slipped on the ice and uh, uh, broke my ass. I put that on my Facebook page, and someone wrote, oh, I'm so sorry, get well. I'm like, I didn't really break my ass, dude. I just have a big old bruise that looks like a trailer park girl gone good. You know what I mean? I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I saw a, a friend of ours there, and uh, uh, an old friend of mine, who uh, Tom Hester. Okay. And uh, and Tom's doing really good. You know, I was thinking today as I was driving to meet my friend Joel Shepard. Uh, I told you about my friend Joel Shepard. She's a B movie actress, and uh, I asked her if she would be on the podcast because she is one of the most interesting ladies around. And uh, uh, but she's she declined, or she wanted wanted uh, too many uh, you know what I mean rules about what we could talk about pass, and I pass. said uh, okay. you are the hottest chick that I know but pass a Rooney but I was thinking about how uh, at this point in my life and I hope people feel this way uh, so many people are afraid uh, of getting old you know what I mean or, or aging or just you know what I mean uh, been to the rodeo too many times whatever you want to say but I was thinking how great it is to be past the age of 40 when your friends finally get it together you know what i mean when your friends finally understand you know what that you got 20 fucking years left that's what you understand when you hit 40 you sit there one day and you go holy shit in reality i got about 20 fucking three years left what can i do to make this better you know it's uh it's really weird to see that and you see that with comedians a lot yeah because you have to you wake up one day you're in a hotel you're a funny guy and these guys that aren't as funny as doing shit, and you're still stuck in this little community, you know, whatever the fuck it is. And uh, But it's in any part of life. Right. You could be a doctor, you could be a lawyer, you could be a fucking thief. You know, it really hits home when you hit 40. Yeah. Because it hits home that, fuck, people are starting to get sick around me. And, you know, the average, 63, right. 60, well, I hit Social Security, you know. Right. I'm 48, and I just did acid fucking two days ago. You know, so it's... <laughs> It's whatever you feel like, you know? I right, mean. right. I mean, uh, yeah, absolutely. Look, everyone's different. But I just, just had this really nice moment when I came back and I was visiting my friend uh, on the way there thinking, wow, it's just really awesome to see uh, that, you know, that people do change, that people do uh, uh, make improvements in their lives. You either change yeah. or you fucking stay in the same rut, guy, you know? Yeah. And that's why when you see people from 10 years ago, and they're still in the same rut. You sympathize for them, but in a way, I, I, what the fuck? What the fuck? You're still going to that same bar or they were asking about me? Really? You should be ashamed of yourself. You have to evolve in your life sometimes. You have to change. And sometimes you just have to, you know, sometimes you have to reinvent yourself, even if it's in front of your wife or your friends or something. And I get aggravated with that. I have a friend just like you that, you know, every six months is a different fucking story. And lately, I just don't even talk to that person no more because it's just a wear out. Yeah. You're still doing the same shit 10 years ago? Really? I mean, uh, this is it? Yeah. This is fucking it, you know? So. But, but here's the thing. When you get that way with someone, when you have exactly that feeling that you just described, and then you see them six months or a year or two years later, of, of, uh, and they've changed. Like, that does happen. People do get better. People do change. People do understand. Not everybody. But when that happens, that's just really a cool It's a beautiful cool thing. You, yeah. you feel for them. Yeah. You look, And you can tell when somebody's changed. You can see it in their eyes. Yeah. You can see a certain gleam in their eyes. You know when you haven't seen somebody in eight months and you talk to them and they're kind of fucked up, but they're trying to tell you that they, and they're fucked up and you're looking at their gleam and they're just covering up and I feel for those people. Right. But some people, they don't even have to open their mouth. For you to know they're doing well. The right. smile on their face, the twinkle in their eye. You know, there's just something about them that you know. It's a certain patois. It's a certain energy, you know? Right, right. 
and uh, and just uh, it's also interesting to see uh, because sometimes you can't look at uh, you know the shit that you go through too much, but to to see all your other friends that to get to that point, some pretty dark shit had to go down, but that you know, but that they don't regret that the dark shit went down. They survived it. They've moved on, and uh, and are better people. For Everybody's got their here. personal Vietnam. Yeah. You know, it kills me when people come to you with a story and they think they're special because something bad happened in their life. Let me tell you something, my friend. We all have a personal Vietnam. What differentiates a champion from a fucking Momo is that you get up, you pick up the fucking pieces, and you move forward. Right. You know, I ask myself every morning, what the fuck am I doing out in Hollywood still trying to make it as a comedian or an actor or whatever? But you have a passion. And who am I to, to, to compliment or, or destroy somebody else's dream or them destroying mine? Right. The main equivalent to this is we all have a Vietnam. Get the fuck up and go attack your life. This is what this podcast is about. I don't give a Absolutely. fuck what you've been through. Absolutely. I don't give a fuck if you sucked a thousand dicks. I don't give a fuck what you've been through. Whatever your crime may be, we may look at you a little different at you first. You can email and judge. us that information, yeah. by the way, and if judge you'd like you like us to talk about it. And judge you, you know. Yeah. But at the same fucking time, I mean, what, what, you know, as long as you're doing your thing, you just prove everybody wrong. Hey, man, I, I fell down. I made a fucking mistake. Let me tell you, it's an interesting story that happened last week. Last week, I seen something, and... Uh, and you know me, I, I don't give a fuck most of the time, but I really don't want to put this out there, but I'll put it out there in a way. I called a, a friend of mine that I've known for 15 fucking years, 16 years, and I told him that a certain breakdown had come out for a show. And he knows the people real well. Now, I thought about it, and I ran it by my wife, who's my second voice, and she, for once she gave me wrong advice. She goes, call that person and ask him. And I wanted to p pray on it first. I wanted to think of the question, how I was going to approach it. So one thing led to another, and he, I spoke to him, and he said, no worries, I'll talk to that person tonight and get back to you. That's been a week ago, a week ago. Part of me is upset, but the other part isn't upset because I should have known the guy was a cunt. He's always been a cunt, you know what I'm saying? And people don't change. That quality of people never changes, you follow me? There's some qualities you could change, but kind of when you're a sneak and a kind of a cunty guy, you can't change that shit. That shit always remains with you. That's like herpes. You know what I'm saying? When you're a cunty situation of a guy or something, that always stays with you. But as far as you picking up the pieces and moving forward, you got to do what the fuck you got to do. And in my situation, I could sit there and be mad at the guy or whatever, but I'm just going to keep doing what I do because it doesn't matter. It's just one less bump in the road. Right. Who gives a fuck? Right. What's the matter? You're all right. You're in a fog. Well, no, know? I was thinking about what you were saying, and uh, uh, I, I, you know, is this a person who is has some kind of position that where he's very busy? Uh, he has a position that he's busy, and he has a position. He has a thousand positions, but I used to fucking change his kids' diapers, so yeah. I don't give a fuck how busy you are. Right. Do you follow what I'm saying to you? Yeah. I don't give a fuck how busy you are. I used to change your kids' diapers. I used to watch your kid when you do comedy. So no biz, no matter how busy I was. I always took the chance to go change his kids' diapers. And that's why I'm so, like, whatever. But I'm really in, like, kind of shock. Yeah. That's it. There's acquaintances in Hollywood, and there's people who got your back. Right. And there's acquaintances in life, and there's people who got your back in life. And sometimes you realize it in a, in a, in a shitty way that they don't have your back. I don't know if people at home know this, and I wanted to get this out there. Do you know I was a high school dropout? You had said that, but then I thought they asked you, you to come back, or you went back. I went or back. A teacher, really, I dropped out. Uh, I dropped out in you. September, and uh -huh. I went back like in December. Right. And then in, in June or May, they said I didn't have enough credits to graduate. I was short by a couple of credits, so they kind of reamed me out for hanging out with this certain kind of whatever. They were like, right. "Well, you were an athlete, but we can't give you the whatever." And I didn't go to graduation. They said I wanted to go to summer school to get a diploma, and I just blew off summer school. Right. And years later, but it didn't dawn on me till this week when I was standing there at the UFC for some reason, or Friday night. It came to me like on a whim that I was a high school dropout. And a lot of times when I go into those theft stories from 18, whatever, and all those situations, again, I'm not crying like a pussy. A lot of the things that were bothering me, one of the big things was that I was a high school graduate uh, dropout. It destroyed me at the time because it wasn't bad enough that I was a thief and it wasn't bad enough that I was doing drugs and I was an orphan and I was out there. But all of a sudden, I did what was expected of me, which was to drop out of fucking high school. That was one of the worst things I, I thought I could ever do in my life, you know? And I dropped out and like we were just talking about your own personal Vietnam. Between that and the death of my mom, it took me into a weird rut for a long time. And I remember when I went back and took the courses 
to uh, get my high school diploma. Then I took the test for my GED. You know, I felt like such a fucking momo, but I had really made a big accomplishment. And I, and I remember how good I felt and how much of a leap that had given me. It was just a GED diploma, but it elevated me in my life to do bigger and better things. And looking back at it, if I didn't get my high school diploma, I wouldn't be here with you right now. Right. Because it gave me hope. And it's so weird that we're talking about this shit that sometimes a bump in the road happens. But it's how you react to it. Even if it takes you years to get back on the fucking horse, you got back on the fucking horse. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it was just weird that for a long time that was a big pain in my... I was really embarrassed about it. Like when it happened, when I had to drop out, what happened was what usually happens. When there's no money, you got to get a job. But in, in reality, in a way, I think I was lazy. I think I could have got a job and went to school. But I just wanted to get it over with. I didn't think I had it in me at the time. Right. So it really fucked with my ego. It fucked with who I was. And uh, that, that's it. That's it. So well, I can totally about. understand that. I mean, I, uh, uh, my senior year of high school had to move from Colorado to California. And then I had to uh, repeat a grade because the credit system was a lot different, you know, when you got credits for classes. And uh, so then I opted to go to a continuation school where you go and you work at your own pace. So you could work as fast as you wanted or as slow as you wanted. And I worked my ass off. And I graduated only like a month after all my friends in Colorado graduated and uh, but I never went to a prom you know it wasn't that kind of school and I always felt uh, cheated by that you know and uh, and uh, uh, I didn't have the experience with the people that I had uh, grown up with for a long time and that made me feel embarrassed quite honestly too so no, I can, it's, under it's weird. It's a I weird can feeling. understand that yeah absolutely you know, when I was a kid growing up, there were all those commercials about dropouts and hemophiliacs. You don't hear about hemophiliacs no more. When I was right. a kid, that was big, the hemophiliac yeah. association. You, you used to hear about hemophiliacs and falling asleep while smoking a cigarette. Yeah, the, <laughs> that was like a fucking, you yeah. got to be careful falling asleep. And the Indian crying on the beach when he <laughs> bumped into the pollution. You don't get those no more. There's no commercials to make you feel bad no more. Yeah, just, yeah. just the ASPCA ones with the dog with the missing right, eye and yeah. the fucking. And I don't go for that shit. Yeah. You send money and it goes in somebody else's goddamn pocket. There's a comedian, Jay Davis, who was on the Orgasmo tour with Dane Cook. And uh, for years, he, what a lot of people don't know was before Dane got big was that this uh, room was called, I forget what the fuck I told you it was called. It was on Sunset Strip. Every Tuesdays they would do comedy. It would just pack up an industry and all these hipsters. And, and no matter who went there, the only one that got real laughs was Dane Cook. They really loved was Dane Cook. Dresden? No, 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 no. It was up more. Now it's like in a, uh, a building. Uh, I forget. We just talked about it. Jesus fucking Christ. I know. But uh, the funny thing about it was that he had finally come to me one day and asked me if I wanted to do it. I did it a couple times. And I was getting pretty good in the room. Like, at least I knew the mechanics of the room. But it didn't matter. First off, you always had to follow Dane Cook. Because Dane Cook would always come in and say, I'm only going to do 10 minutes. And he'd do two hours. And then they, they weren't going to laugh at you. But oh, you I hate that. Yeah. I hate that, by you, the way. You David still went Waynes down. used to do that yeah, all the fucking you, time at the comedy you store. You still want to fucking yeah. go on stage. So you hang out yeah. and you stay. So this one night I go up there after Damon and I bomb. But the problem was I told Jay Davies I was coming down there. When Rogan found out I was coming down there, Rogan decides to come down. And Willie Barcena calls me, another comedian that's been on The Tonight Show like 80 times, a Mexican dude that's got a bad temper. So I go down there and I do my set and I bomb. Dane Cook is up there and I, there's nowhere to stand because the people would have 400 people in there. So I stood by the stairway. And all of a sudden there's three girls there and this guy that had long hair that used to hang out at the Union at that comedy room years earlier. So we all start talking, and the chick says to me, are you holding? And I go, no, I'm not. Are you holding? She goes, yeah, I got some blood. I go, go let's go downstairs. So we sneaks downstairs into a, like a freezer combination wine thing. Right. But, we, you know, we're talking, blah, blah, blah. We do a few bumps. She's got nice titties. You know, and I'm like, let me see one of your titties. She takes a titty down. <laughs> you know, I kiss the titty, and next thing you know, show me the monkey. She shows me a monkey, and I go, just for the sake of it, have you ever put a Coke rock on your pussy? And she says, no, I haven't. I go, give me the fucking powder. So she gives me this packet. She's got like four or five grams in there. So I take this Coke rock and I put it in the pussy. And as I'm flapping the lips, the door opens. And it's security. It's this fucking Hindu guy that's yoked up with steroids and a black guy and a white guy. And they're like, we've seen what went down in the camera. We've already called the police. You didn't know about this, Felicia? We called the police. <laughs> I got like $3 on me. I take the eight ball and I put it in my, I got it in my left hand and right. I put it in my sock. And I'm like, please don't roll into my sock the powder. 
Because when you take off the sock, all this powder will fall down, and right. the cops will see it's coke, and it's coke mixed with fungus and God knows what else, right? <laughs> but hopefully it won't hold. So I, I put the thing in my sock, and the black guy stands behind me. They walk me and the girl upstairs in front of everybody. The girl is crying, and all of a sudden it gets out that Joe Diaz got caught doing coke with this girl downstairs. In the in the bat in the in the freezer room in the wine room. So as I walk outside, <laughs> oh, no. they're like the cops are about to come. They waddle me over. They they push me over to the side, and the girl starts crying. The other two girls come out. And they're like, "What happened?" And they're like, "Oh my God, we were doing coke." And, and the guy's like, "She had her pants down. You don't have to do, do that." Why do those guys do because that? Because they're th because this is L.A. Because this is L.A. Like anywhere else in life, if they were getting pussy, they're kings. But if somebody else is getting pussy. They're cunts. That's bullshit. Unbelievable. I mean, they should said the coke thing, but the, the girl thing. Fuck you know? any any way yeah. you put it. If I so if I see that I come down. Were you embarrassed? Get, in a way, but not really. So I'm <laughs> you know, who gives a fuck? So, you know, I'm standing out there and all of a sudden Willie Barcet and Joe Rogan come out. They're like, what happened? You know, like, dog, I got caught eating this fucking chick snatch. So Willie Barcet goes, Bro. They're going to take you down to L.A. County, bro. You have any cash on you? And Willie goes, let's get him some cash real quick. And Joe Rogan takes 100 on and gives me a $100 bill. So I'm sitting there. And all of a sudden, the guys are like, the police are on their way and all this shit. And Joe Rogan and Willie can't believe this is going down. So with that, Joe Rogan and Willie start talking to the bouncers. And all of a sudden, I'm sitting there. And all of a sudden, people start coming out. Comedians start coming out watching me. But I see Ralphie May. He's coming out to Miyagi All You Could Eat. All 600 pounds of Ralphie May. <laughs> and I'm looking at the stairs at him. And he's looking. He's thinking about fucking all the sushi here. He ain't looking at me. But I see him walking across Sunset. And as he's getting closer and closer to me, he makes eye contact. And I look at him. I've known Ralphie for a long time. Ralphie's the sweetest kid from Arkansas that I've poisoned in a way with stories and bullshit. Drives him nuts. So he looks at me. And he gives me like this look. And I go, you know. And I do this thing. The cops are coming. So he comes close. And I go, dog, go get your fucking car. Because I see Willie and Joe Rogan talking to the, the doorman. And they keep looking at me every couple minutes. The girl's still crying. So all of a sudden, I see <laughs> Ralphie May pull up in his fucking forerunner that he's tipped at that time. It was his mother's forerunner. Uh -huh. They were flat broke. They were poor still from Arkansas. And he was so big that the forerunner, the shocks on the right oh, and the left tip, hand, right? would tip from here. He was so big right. and fat. And without nobody knowing, I walked in the car, boom, slammed the door. And Ralphie the whole time was saying, Joey, I can't leave. I have a spot. I said, Ralphie, I'll stab you in the fucking stomach. Just keep driving. And he got right out of there on the sunset. And next thing you know, we were on Crescent Heights and Sunset. And I realized who's better than me. I went out broke and I came back with an eight ball and a hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> who's better than me? And I ate some chick's pussy. Who's better than me? Oh, like a doctor. God. And I was home by 930. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> who's better than me? Who the fuck is better than me? You know what? I would have just loved to see the look on Joe Rogan's face and Willie Barson and when you said, and I ate this girl's pussy, I'm sure they were like, how the fuck does he do that? No, they couldn't believe it. <laughs> they couldn't fucking believe it. They couldn't believe it. These are crazy stories that I just remembered on the top of my head. <laughs> Ralphie May to this day kept saying, Joey, we're not going to make it back. I have a spot. Why don't you wait in my car? I said, Ralphie, get me the fuck out of here because the cops are coming. As soon as I left, Joe Rogan calls. He goes, Joey, where are you? They're looking all over the building for you. Two cop cars are here. I was gone, Jack. Oh no address, God. no nothing. And there's, you and do I, leave. When, when the cops are oh, called, nobody's there better is than me. You, yeah, and I'm banned. Like, yeah. I was banned. This, the place is called the Dublin, Jay Davies' room. And Dublin banned me for life, me and Brian Holtzman. But Brian Holtzman threw a chair at a customer. So that's, oh, that's why they fair. banned him. But they banned me for eating a girl's monkey. Nobody in the comedy life has ever been banned from a club from getting <laughs> caught speaking into a girl's monkey. So that's how fucking intense I am, bitches. <laughs> By the way, my question is, how many uh, stories do you have where it starts off, so I'm putting a rock in a girl's pussy? Oh, please. <laughs> <That's what laughs> She's got her leg up on top of a fucking beer case, on top oh of a case of beer. She said, we made like a little make-believe right. bed down there. We moved oh some cases God. around. She sat down. I had her like a gynecologist's office made out of beer yeah. cases. I had her and leg spread, and I put that little one gram rock in the pussy and just kept going like this to the pussy lips. <laughs> Oh and I just Joey, melted it. She's crying and all numb down I mean, there. you know what I'm saying. Come on. This is I what know. I'm telling you, Felicia. Know. You know, we it's have fun here. because, you know, I would hate for the principal of my school to be listening to the podcast. What are you going to do? That I'm hanging out with a guy that has 23. I've just put a fucking rock in a girl's pussy joke. Uh, Come on, uh, dog. Who the story? fuck comes home with $100 on so you just on left the girl there. Fuck her. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes. <laughs> That's right. One moment, put a rock in. The next moment, I just met her. away from that bitch. Listen, when you just meet a girl, she lets you put a rock in her pussy. 
There ain't no phone numbers after that. You know what I'm saying? You meet a girl, and within an hour, you're putting a gram of coke in her pussy. Okay? What is follows that? I'm going to meet her mom. We're going to get married. We're going to go on a honeymoon and fall in love. I just put a rock on your fucking pussy. You know, when I, she gives birth to my kid. The kid came out perfect. Sure, I put a rock on the pussy eight years ago, and it hasn't fucking stopped. That cave hasn't stopped, Jack. <laughs> Oh, Felicia, what are you going to do? These things happen. I, I, you know, I'm not making a judgment, and, and you know, uh, you know, it's all good. You know, I, I'm all, uh, you know, and I hate to be this way, but so I, uh, people, you know, come to my Facebook uh, very nicely uh, because they listen to Beauty and the Beast, and then this guy, uh, I friended him, and then yesterday he puts on my Facebook, like at 2 in the morning, he puts on, yeah, I really like those Coke stories and uh, stealing stories you guys do, right? And I couldn't tell if he was joking or if he was serious, and so I deleted it, but that's why I'm all like, oh, Joey, even though I think, God damn, Joey, how did you talk a girl into putting a rock in her pussy? Listen, that, that, seemed like that, that seems like that goes down fast. One Is night, it just because you're all coked up and extra chatty? Oh, please. One night I'm at El Compadre, which is a mile down the road. This is my open mic days. Not really. I, I was already uh, in the store and all this, and one night I have a showcase at the Laugh Factory, and the people say, let's go to El Compadre afterward. And that's why I used to go buy my Coke from the Mexican guitar player there. <laughs> so I go over, you, you throw a fucking 20 inside the guitar hole, and yeah. all of a sudden he pick up his arm and a Coke rock would fall out in the package. It was brilliant. <laughs> you, he'd come over and sing to your table. Right. You put the 20 in the fucking hole in the guitar while he was singing, oh, Llorame, really? besame mucho. And as the trio would move, he'd open up his fucking wing and a Coke rock would fall out in the package. <laughs> And he'd go on to the next table. You've never seen that type of entertainment. Like that should be like a moving tin toy from the 20s. <laughs> and I wish I was lying to you. I wish I was lying to you. So I go up to El Compadre. My friend Eddie Brown goes there, and he's got some girl there. And I'm talking to him, but I'm really up there to cop. So I had to make believe I wanted to eat. I didn't want Eddie to know I was there to cop, you know. So I go cop, and then I get like a little tamale, which are delicious. We've gone there on a Monday night, and I eat the tamale. And also some drunk girl comes up to me. She starts talking about how... She likes to drink tequila and stay. I don't even know. One thing, another, we do a shot of tequila, and she goes, you know what? I like to suck dick when I drink tequila. I swear <laughs> to God. And Shut I'm like, up. really? And really? I'm like, guess what? Really? I like my dick sucked when I drink tequila. <laughs> We're a pan matched in heaven. So we start talking. We start drinking more and more tequila. And one thing leads to another. I say to her, listen, let's go in the fucking bathroom. Let's see what you got. She goes, fine. And we go into the bathroom. And then El Compadre, there's a uh, urinal, a bathroom without a door. And then there's the executive suite, which has a door and whatever, you know. So I go in and we're in the hallway. We make out. And then, boom, she falls into the bathroom. And I'm in there with her making out, making out, making out. I take out the Cuban egg roll. She goes down, whatever. And I was so drunk and whatever that I, I forgot all about it. I get home. And I go to bed, and that's it. I'm coked up, and I wake up the next day, and I forget all about it. The next day, I'm driving. Eddie Bravo calls me. He goes, where'd you go last night? I said, I went home. He goes, did you leave with that chick? I go, oh, my God. You just fucking reminded me. What happened? He goes, what happened? I go, that chick gave me a blowjob in the bathroom. And he's like, where in the bathroom? He goes, there's no way to give a blowjob in El Compadre's bathroom. I go, yeah, in the bathroom. He goes, where, in the stall? I go, yeah, in the stall. He goes, did you lock the door? I go, why would I lock the door? She was sucking my dick. <laughs> if I was sucking her dick, I'd lock the door. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm conscientious like that. You follow what I'm saying? It's here. I mean, that wouldn't, and I, Felicia, it's so weird. You think back at this, like the other, we were talking about uh, in 2001, I used to be on the road all the time, and I met this girl, no, 98, that was, if I was 30-something, she had to be 40-something, and she had a landscaping business in Syracuse. And we started out as friends, and then she was my little Syracuse freak. So whenever I was in the North Shore up there, I would call <laughs> her up, and she had kids. I'd go over there and live with her and the kids. I was like Uncle Joe, and she'd make me pasta for Zool. It was fucking crazy, Felicia. And she had this landscaping company, and I would work the days off, and then I would leave on Thursday. Like if I was in Syracuse, Rochester, Buffalo, Toronto, then I'd come right back. And I never forgot. I, one day I just stopped calling her. Like it's the weirdest thing what happens during your comedy career. Like these stories that you come up with. That's why when people email me every week, they're like, man, we like your stories. When are they going to end? They're never going to fucking end. <laughs> I'm reading Keith Richards' book right now, and I'm learning. This guy had 30 years of fucking stories on the road. Oh, I'm so, sure. No, no. Yeah, yeah. 40, yeah, 50, yeah. from 1960, yeah. which is 40 to 10 more years. Right. People like all these fucking stories. Bro, oh, yeah. you know the stories you develop after all those years and you see, and you forget. Like I told you, I, I mean, I forget about. Stories about eating people in the bathroom. I forget about, 
you know, getting a high school diploma, and you just go in and out of them. It's so weird how you go in and out of these thoughts in your mind. And we got a lot of young viewers, you know, that listen to this shit, and you're going to see that. You don't think that these moments are special as they're going on in your life, but when you get older, you tag back to them, and you fucking laugh for two minutes. And I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I put a Coke rock in a stranger's pussy that I never met before. But hey, weird <laughs> things have happened. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know what? And here's the thing: a lot of men go to college, work their ass off, and uh, and and they don't have the ability to put a rock of cocaine in a girl's pussy. Neither did I. I never knew I could do it until yeah. it came. It's yeah. not something you practice at home, Felicia. No, that's something you it's learn not on something the street, that you, my yeah, friend. <laughs> that you don't even learn on the street. It just happens that spontaneous. You're coked up. Your jaw's going. She's joined. You're in another mind and place. You got an extra coke rock. Why not put it in that little fucking cave and see what happens? Things must be pretty flush if you have an extra Coke rock, though. Well, what are you going to do? Sometimes at 3 in the morning, you got to give up something to get something else. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I put thousands of things in girls' little monkeys. Out the cell serve and Coke and... What's the big deal? Jeez. Nothing, nobody's ever put nothing in your monkey besides a unit and a dildo or something? Well, I mean, you Nobody know. Nobody stuck a wine bottle in there and had some no, fun with Felicia, no, pour some no, champagne no, in your little monkey? No, no, and watched it bubble? That, no, 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 no. Nobody's ever put those no, little candy rocks in your pussy and no, watched them pop? No, What kind no. of fucking boring just, people do you hang a, out with? Just a lot of lip service, my friend. That's it? All right, I ain't mad at them. <laughs> that's how I roll. But that's what I'm saying. You put pop rocks in your pussy and when you're blowing up, you lick the clit, it drives women fucking crazy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like a double run tundra. Then you throw one of those fucking pop rocks in your ass all at the same time. You have no idea what ecstasy is. I don't is. know. That all smacks of laziness to me. All you hear is ba 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 And I'm licking that fucking monkey. You think you're getting your pussy sucked during the Civil War. Cannons are going off and balloons. Did you say pop rock candy? Yeah. You never put pop rock candy in your pussy? Ba 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 What are you fucking nuts? I did that like when I was 19. It was an adventure. Oh my God! There was what did, what, what did the girl say? Was the girl like, "What the fuck"? She just sat there with her mouth open. What do you do? I talked her <laughs> into putting pop rocks in the pussy. That alone, I should get like a question on Jeopardy. You know what I'm saying? Did you pour the whole packet? No, of pop you put rocks? a cup. I always, I, I always skin pop. I've told you that I'm an old junkie. You got a skin pop. Let's put two or one just to see what happens. You know what I'm saying? Pop, pop, pop. You're licking that fucking clit. Think about it, Phil. You're licking that clit. You're in the zone. Also, I pour two of those things on your monkey. And just as you're about to burst, you hear, bah, 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 and all the liquid starts turning red and purple and shit. Come on, dog. You got to be a real <laughs> momentico. They don't even do that shit on adamandeve.com. That's how we roll, bitches. Let's give a shout out to our sponsors. <laughs> AdamandEve.com for all your sexual needs. Not to mention SkinIndustries.com. The shirt is out, bitches. I got 20 of them on my possession. You understand me? We'll be putting them up on the SkinIndustries.com webpage soon to sell. Details to follow. That's right. And if you would like to email us, you can email us at Beauty and the Beast uh, podcast at, at gmail.com. Gmail Sorry, while you were doing that commercial from our sponsors I just could I was I was like stun struck about the pop rocks and the pussy dog I, I was told fucking, you I was like literally you stunned me with that you know and like, people have done it before I'm get, I get listen when you hear this if you put a pop rock in a chick's what pussy what about if a, if a girl put a pop rock down your penis I would love it nobody's ever had the well, balls well, to do it well because well, it could maybe you know what about if someone opened your penis and put a and put a whole I put a coke I could I put a coke rock in my own penis one time just to see oh yeah and what happened nothing it just got numb for like 15 minutes I no, couldn't pee it didn't every time to, uh, no write sometimes, a letter to you and sometimes you gotta do things to give up something stories? you know you, I say to you Felicia let me put a coke rock in your pussy and you'll look at me and say no you first and I'll say, I don't have a pussy. And also, I'll take the Cuban egg roll out and just wet it a little bit and put that croak rock in it and pack it like a cannon in, 19, in 1690. I think I'm George Washington. I get a little Q-tip and shit and just pack that motherfucker. So when you fucking give me a little HUD buffer, it comes out mixed with tropical helmet juice and it's got a little wang to it. You know what I'm saying? So you get sperm mixed with coke. You get a little freeze with all at one shot. You follow me? You never got one of those? No. What kind never of freak got are one, you? Never never gave one. <laughs> Jesus. You never sucked a guy's dick with a coke rug on it, Felicia? No. What kind no, of freak are you? No, I'm, I'm like, a, I'm old school. I just, oh, you know. Jesus I, you know. I just, uh, I just like a couple of drinks. That's all you gotta do for me. Nobody's ever put a straw in your pussy and sucked backwards. No. Oh, you have no. no you, well, you gotta get yourself a real killer. You know what I'm saying? Really? 
Yeah, you really? put you put a straw in your asshole and one in your pussy yeah. and you blow and you see if it comes out the other. So you never yeah, think about this. This is this is the trade off about you. You'll do that to a woman, but you'll only fuck a woman for five minutes. Didn't you say five that? minutes? You're giving and yourself. You're giving me too much credit. <laughs> <laughs> five minutes. You're doubling the pleasure in your head. You lucky if you give you that, you know what I'm saying? Well, I'm just saying I think if you have enough uh, time with a woman that's naked where you're putting p- cocaine in her pussy, you that's when you should be fucking or not. Listen, the problem is this, pussy. okay? You're you all coked up, your mind is in the gutter. You're looking at her, she's naked, she may be reading a book, she's got that little asshole <laughs> popping up. You flip her around, you go, I'm gonna put a coke rock in your pussy. But before you do that, you gotta prove something to them. So you put the coke rock on your dick, you look at them all evil, you're like, I'm gonna tear you up. And then you put the coke rock in their pussy, you play with their clit, and next thing you know, you got dead dick. So now they're looking at you, you're looking at them, and you're like, what are you looking at me for? I'm just going to put this in the oven and see what happens. You know what I'm saying? You don't know, Felicia, you don't know when you're drugged up. We just got an email about a guy who licked the girl's fucking foot. What makes you think, I mean, come on, huh? At a all, party with, when everyone's all passed out. After she's been walking around with shoes all night and barefoot. You yeah. know when chicks after two, they walk around barefoot. She's probably in the bathroom standing on piss, and this fucking moron licks her foot. Are you fucking kidding me? I wouldn't. I wouldn't lick no. I wouldn't even put a coke rock on a foot. That's a waste, right there. <laughs> That's a waste, right there. And I'm gonna put it on the asshole or on the little monkey to get the party started. Well, geez, it seems to me if if, uh, uh, if I was a girl and I was all coked up and I'd been up for about forty hours. Could I talk hours, you into putting pop rocks no, in your I'm asshole? No, I'm just saying no. But if I've been up for forty eight hours, you know, uh, I would you let me put a pop rock in your pussy just for the challenge? Just no. For the, what, should we do a live upstream of you putting a pop rock in my pussy? I would love to. It would, <laughs> it would get viral. We would blow up. Uh, Fuck Kardashian. We'd, so we'd have our own reality we'd show. So blow up. Forget, we'd be sponsored by Pop Rocks. <laughs> <laughs> After that day, we'd be sponsored by Pop Rocks, Sugar Pops, Crackle Pop. We'd be sponsored by every type of fucking pop. Cocoa Pops. Cocoa Pops. Every pop. Warm Pops. Forget about it. <laughs> pops, the shoe shine guy over at the fucking thing. We could have everybody sponsoring this. Soda Pop. <laughs> Forget it. Look at Felicia having a good old time. <laughs> Look at Felicia having a good old time and shit over there. Awesome. All right. Well, Joey, uh, I'm so glad to see you. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy glad to we see both you. had an adventure this weekend, but it's been uh, super cool to see you and not on our normal time. That's and, right. Uh, this is we're good at any time. Sometimes it's better in the afternoon. Sometimes it's better in the morning. You know what I'm and, saying? Yeah, yeah. And we'll be back. We have a great show. You know. Oh, by the way, uh, we wanted to mention that uh, I am going to uh, be with you uh, this Not with weekend. me. Not You're going to be you. with Felipe. Well, we're both working with, with Felipe. With Felipe Esparza. Esparza. I'm Thursday be through, from, yeah. Uh, you're doing Thursday. I'm doing Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then you're doing Monday because you're going to be in Phoenix at the... Uh, comedy spot in Scottsdale, Arizona. So I'm at the comedy spot in Scottsdale, Arizona. Felicia Michaels will be at the Ontario Improv Friday, Saturday, and Sunday working with Felipe Esparza. I don't know the number off the top of my head, but come on down. You're going to have a great show. And tickets for that Felipe Esparza show will go fast. And so on my comedy uh, spot show because it only seats 100 people at comedy spot. Yeah, I'm going to be there the fast. week after. Yes. And I'm really, small rooms like that fucking rock. Yeah, we, yeah. they rock. So uh, yeah. thank you very much for listening. You know we love you. Uh, it's our episode what? 27. 20 fucking seven episodes, and it's all I because know, of you people. I know. So please keep listening, stay black, and we'll keep you posted on the shirts. I hope on episode 100 you tell another uh, Code Rock and a Pussy story. I'm with you. I love you. Give him a kiss, Felicia. Mwah. Love you guys. Stay black. Have a great week. Mm-hmm.